So the first women's singles goes the way of Japan. Rina Wang makes way for her little sister Iris Wang, who takes on Eriko Hirosa in uh, match number two here in the women's singles. Like the uh, their predecessors on court, these two have uh, never met before. But uh, of course, like the match before, it's certainly going to be Japan who'll be favourites to take this uh, second rubber. Of course. Japan do go three love up in it if they uh, take this and then uh, the uh, first women's doubles we will see rubbers th four and five still here they come Hirosa leading the way well like Sato Hirosa's a uh, had her struggles this year as well. Iris Wang, who uh, is only 17 years of age. And like her sister, is going to be going to UCLA in uh, coming semesters. Bunch of officials there. And Spear on the left, and uh, Ryan De Silva, who's going to be the umpire for this match. Well, there is uh, Iris Wang. We'll be playing in Japan later this year at the uh, World Juniors. Playing the most recent World Junior Championship, but uh, she's learning all the time and something like this. Uh, this Uber Cup, her first Uber Cup experience, uh, will put her in great stead for one would hope uh, a successful career to come. But she's going to have our work cut out here against Hirosa. Yes, it's a tall order from the youngster, Iris Rang. But I mean, she has played well so far this year. What, what I like about her progression in World Badminton, as you say, is still very young. But the tournaments that she's been playing so far, she's been playing international challenger events. And already this year, she's reached three semi-finals, Polish in Finland and also in Peru. So, you know, she's getting the experience in lower grade tournaments and getting learning how to win. She's getting through round after round, whereas what we have a tendency to do with some of the European players, a youngster shows potential, and we throw them in at the deep end at the Grand Prix tournaments, or maybe even Super Series tournaments, where they, they lose early rounds, and they're not getting the experience of match after match, and they're not learning how to win. And this is one of the big problems for Hirose at the moment, the 27-year-old, because uh, her world ranking, as you can see, has dipped dramatically. She was up at number seven in the world and now down at 24. Eight tournaments this year, four first round losses, four second round losses. Now that's not building confidence in the same way as uh, the American, who as I say, has already reached three semi-finals this year. Yep, and as you can see, a uh, win-loss ratio of 7-7 seven, seven is uh, you know, at that age not to be sniffed at. She's had that winning feeling. She uh, played at one of the lesser events, the finish open as well, and beat uh, Susan Egglestaff, who, you know, is no mean player herself. So she's going to probably come in here with some amount of confidence. And as you mentioned again, uh, Hirosa is a player who's uh, pretty short on it, although she has to go back a couple of years to <laughs> show that what she is capable of, a finalist at the uh, All England Championship. Yeah, that was 2010. last year. 2011, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. And um, uh, just played magnificent badminton the whole week. I mean, it was a stunning performance. And, you know, she's beaten players like Zhu Lin. Uh, three months before Zhu Lin won the world title, she's beaten... Sina uh, Nawal. Sina Nawal. You know, Juliana Schenk, who's just been in the final of the last Super Series event prior to this, the Indian Open. You know, so she's had some really, really good results, but she's never won a title. Two times she's been in major finals, but never actually won a title. And that's what I was trying to explain about the difference in the way that the top nations bring their players on and some of the lesser nations in badminton terms. So the Americans send their players to the lesser grade tournaments. 
Japan, because it's such a big badminton nation, send them to the higher grade tournaments, but their players aren't winning titles. They're not learning how to, to experience that winning feeling. Yeah, but I suppose if you've got the talent of someone who can, you know, reach a final at the All England, and she's been in, what, six semi-finals in Super Series events, she... one up, second match here. Erika Harosa to start. What was that? Fault receiver. Mm. Moving before the shuttle was struck. My goodness, so early on in the game. That's extraordinary. I mean, that's out as well. Not the start that Hiroso would have wanted. Is that just a sign of nerves? Maybe a little over anxious? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> start that Iris Wang would have wanted. I suppose when you're at this kind of age, you, you, you fear this really. Nothing to lose for her in this match. First point on the board for Hirosa. Wang just opening up the court with the cross court angle and wasn't really ready. That's why she made the error, took it very late deep in her forehand corner. Oh, that's nice. coming forward. Well, hopefully we'll uh, give her the platform, Hirosa. in a row now for the Japanese player. as if she changed Five. her mind there. Iriko Hirose. Just let the shuttle drop so low before she actually hit the overhead, hit it with a bent arm. I think it's all 
is a dilemma for teammates. You want so desperately want to watch your your teammate playing on court, but if you're next match on, you really should be going somewhere quiet and just doing your stretching, just getting yourself mentally ready. until uh, Herosis put in the net, but great movement, wasn't it, from Iris Wang there. One or two lovely shots, Herosa, and he was one of them. Yeah, there's another. Eight, I've always thought she's one of those players that has delightful racket skills, but really her. her Set is her movement around the court. She's uh, very efficient with her movement. Retrieves shuttle after shuttle that you think is impossible for her to get back. But I suppose the one weakness, as far as she's concerned, is she doesn't have a real weapon, a real outstanding shot that she can. Oh my goodness, she's missed that too. That she can really end the rally Nine, with. She eight. hasn't got the power play. She hasn't got the big smash. She's got nice disguise but she really has to work so hard for every point yeah, a bit of an embarrassing miss that one for her but yeah. one you could smile about as long as you go on and take the game she wins the next point So 11-9 at the interval. I mean, what do we take from these uh, opening couple of matches? The Americans have played well, and I think they'll be pretty happy that they've pushed the Japanese players as much as they can. But does it say more about the Japanese players and maybe they're not quite where they want to be? I think, to be honest, it's probably a little bit of both. It's, um, you know, I've watched the Japanese players in, in recent times and recent tournaments, and I, I have to say what's been delightful to see with all the Japanese players is that they've all been absolutely fighting, genuinely fighting for their place to qualify for the Olympics. There's been a lot of rumors and a lot of talk in badminton about uh, whether uh, players from the same nation playing against each other, whether it's a hundred percent commitment. There is no doubt with the Japanese team, they've been giving 110% all of the time. And I think that just, you know, now at the end of the qualifying period, I think they're mentally and physically just tired and probably emotionally tired as well. And sport is a test physically, mentally and emotionally. So if, if you're tired in one of those departments, it's going to have quite an effect on your overall performance. And schedule wise, there's obviously some events coming up in between now and the Olympics as well. I mean. It's obviously a, a difficult balance to get right for these players. Very difficult. And, and people are approaching it in a different way. You know, it's, uh, it's very good to see, uh, you know, 
so many of the top players here, and I think that's a reflection on, on the absolute importance of Thomas and Uber Cups in world, in world terms. But you also look at the fact that the German, top German women's singles player, Juliana Schenk, she's not here. She's preparing for the Olympics. I've just heard that Jung Jae Sung from Korea, he's not coming here. He's part of the number two in pair in the world in Korea in men's doubles. You know, there are some players who've said, is this the right thing to do, to come to this event, play the Super Series events coming up. There's two of them. There's the Indonesian Open, Singapore Open, all of that prior to the Olympics, because these are these are test matches here in Wuhan. But then again, you don't want to be going into the Olympics rusty either, do you? No, and, and I'm a great believer. There's a lot of players that thrive off the match fitness. We've just seen the world number one, Lee Chong Wei, come back from injury, his shoulder injury. The, the last tournament he played, first tournament back, the Indian Open Super Series event uh, since that injury problem. And to me, he didn't look match fit. He will relish the opportunity of playing here to get his match fitness back. So it depends on the player, but, you know, it's going to be fascinating to watch the whole week. Marosa starting to stamp her influence on this match now. Bit of a struggle at the start. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have the third match of women's singles in all three. Representing China, Li Xuezui. Representing South Africa. Oh, that's lovely. What a shot. It appeared to me to be off balance as she played that almost contorting her back and yet the racket head control to place that across court absolutely phenomenal from her opponent. Yeah, there's something about Iris Wang. She's a uh, pretty sprightly looking player and she moves around the court very well. Not the tallest of athletes though, 158. That's about, what, just over five foot two. Well, I still have a little bit of growing left in her. The age of 17. But she's not going to be tall, that's for sure. <laughs> hey! uh, it's well worked. Superb. Yeah, moved her opponent to the net, backhand side, then smashed down the forehand side, making her twist and turn. Good from Hirosa. She's uh, finding her mark now. Making some fabulous shots.
perception and the skill 14, level on that shot. 17. Morris Wang is absolutely top class. Wonderful slicing across the feathers, creating extra spin on the shuttle, and that brings the shuttle down even quicker. down her opponent's forehand side yet again. 18, yeah, a better quality to this match though, isn't there, to the one uh, prior to this between Sato and Rina Wang. See more winners rather than unforced errors. Six game points for Erika Hirose. How many times so it's over. has the American 15, played that cross court 15. slice to such great effect? Twenty-one fifteen. First game won by Japan. Twenty-one fifteen. Yeah, Rika Hirose just showing some uh, classy smashes in the uh, latter half of that game. Twenty-one fifteen. The uh, scoreline. But sometimes you see, sometimes you need to move the opponent from the middle, and then sometimes you need a safety return. A mistake by yourself too much. Is it? If you're not good position, it's a safety return. And if you're looking for the good chance, of the car to still on the But the 80% safety return. Okay, not like a take breaks. Because of the kill, not kill you 50%. No. Oh, you mistake. The point is give the other side 70%. So you must get confident, more confident, get more relaxed, rally, more rally. And they're looking for the time for Samia. But 80% remember, rally. Samia, the point is that you don't have to do much work. And you can find a good job. It's not just that you have to do much work. It's only that you have to do good work. You have to do good work. How do you protect yourself? You protect yourself, you know? It's not like that. You can go to the other side and you can't. So how to protect yourself when you're in a good position? OK? Confidence. Interesting words from uh, Chang Zimin. Just to try and get into more rallies than they need to go for the winners all the time. Difficult in some respect, though, isn't it, to know, and I suppose that's the beauty of it, really, when to attack, when to join, uh, play the risky Eight. shot, because sometimes there are points there to be won. You don't want to play conservative on those shots, do you? <laughs> well, well, anybody that remembers me playing, I don't think safety came into it. <laughs> I don't think it was a word I knew. Which is great to watch. Yeah, but it used to drive my coaches absolutely to distraction. I love I I love to play an adventurous game, and I love to see players playing an adventurous game. And I know coaches will always say there's a time and a place, which is what the American coach was saying. Uh, but you know, I think you have you have to go out and make it happen. You can't sit back and wait for it to happen. Sport is all about taking the opportunities, grasping those opportunities when they present themselves. 
You know, short clear there. Hiroshi on it straight away. Goes for the win. She, she's taking her instructions, isn't she? There, Iris Wang. She's you know making sure she puts it back in. But yeah, in some respect, I, I've got a feeling that's going to work against them. I concur. start to this second game from Hirosa. Yeah, and you have to think, Richard, with the uh, contrast but between these two players, their world ranking, their experience in world terms. You know, you've got uh, one at 87 in the world, the other at 24. You know, you have to say, well, if they play their normal level, then Iris Wang doesn't have much of a realistic chance. And therefore, you know, my philosophy on, on coaching is, You've, you've got to do something extraordinary. You've got to do something that normally you wouldn't do, perhaps. And, and therefore, you know, my coaching philosophy would be to say, you know, go out there, enjoy it, go for everything. You've got nothing to lose. You've got nothing it? to lose. Yeah. Try whatever shot you want. Just absolutely go for it. Yeah. But I'm not a coach. No, That's yeah. probably why. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, you know, I look at the start of this game and it's five love already and I... I think that's because Wang has been listening to what her coach said. Yeah. If they were two evenly matched players, I think those words would ring true because, you know, get them in a rally together, you know, let her make the errors, but the chances are that uh, if you get them in an even rally, you know, this lady on the other side of the court, she may be 24 in the world, but she's been a top 10 player. Yeah. And not too long ago, she's going to be able to produce winners like that, you know? Yeah. You see that rally. Hiroshi absolutely commanding the pace, dictating the pace. She was the one that was pushing her opponent deep into the corner. Then the angled shot across court. So uh, Iris Wang has got the full diagonal of the court to cover. You know, Iris Wang has got to start putting her opponent under pressure. She's got to ask questions of Hiroshi. She's got to somehow turn that round. And she's not going to do that by the simple Eight, clear. No start off the rally you've got to put your opponent under pressure and now confidence is starting to drain as well yeah you know, errors that she wasn't making in that opening game are creeping into twelve of the last thirteen points have been won by Hiroshi that's better Take the chance at the net, absolutely go for it. Stand your ground, you've played a nice net shot, stand there. You've got the opportunity then to take the shuttle off the tape of the top, top of the tape. If they flick it over your head, so be it. You might as well go for it. She's off the mark. Can't hear us, can she? <laughs> <laughs>
kicks out. Well, the American team's just wilted a little uh, this uh, first half of the second game. Never two. It's uh, looking pretty straightforward for Hiroshi. Bon, the uh, Japanese coach, former great player himself when he was representing yeah, Korea. Sometimes higher, draw, you get ready. Because you're higher, often there's no way to kill you. If it's to the point, no way to kill you. And then shot is shot, as long as you're wrong. And they're waiting for the win. But high, the higher half, half court, you can cut. And you court are one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 higher, seconds. pushing net is okay. Well, it's interesting to me because the American coach urging his player give more height on the shuttle when you lift to the back. If you've got height on it, she can't kill it. Now, I know I was saying earlier that Hiroshi doesn't have that big weapon. So, no, she won't be able to kill it. But what she will be able to do if you give her time by lifting the shuttle is allow Hiroshi to dictate the pace. And we've just seen from the first half of this opening game, allowing the Japanese player to dictate the pace is not a wise thing to do. Mm. I'm, I'm with you again, Jill, on that. I, I think it's just going to mean curtains, really, for Wang in quick time here. Yeah. She keeps with that tactic. really going to outmaneuver Hirose either because I said right at the start she's her biggest asset is her moving around the court she's a lovely mover she gets so many shuttles back so I think you really have to put her under pressure with these sharp angled shots put a bit of pace on the shuttle occasionally She certainly was lifting it high up down the other end, though, wasn't she? She's carrying out the instructions, and it's all slipping away for her right now. Only in on victory here, Hiroshi. could even try mixing up her serves a little bit. All of the serves, I think, pretty much all of them have been high serves from both players. Well, in the case of Hiroshi, high, high serves. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was close. I agree with the line judge on that occasion. I think it was definitely Four, wide. But 15. what was interesting to me, she didn't get height on that shuffle from the net, Iris Wang. It was a fast push deep into Hirose's forehand corner, forced the error.
points from victory here. We're going to have a, a Dane in the commentary box in a moment. Steen Peterson's going to be uh, joining you. Of course, Denmark are the other nation in this group. On what you've seen here and knowing who in their team, Jill, do you make them favourites to win this group? I think I'd still stick with uh, Japan, actually, to be favourites to the win the group. They're the number two seeds overall mm -hmm. for the tournament in the Youth Cup this year. So, you know, I think that actually the strength in depth that Japan have got will uh, be a great advantage to them. Lovely badminton. Yep. What a difference when you address the shuttle early at the net. Look, the racket came from above the shuttle before it came underneath to play the net shot. Looks aggressive as an opponent coming forward with the racket up. And you tend to sit back in court waiting for the push and then you're very vulnerable to that drop shot. doing that so well in the opening yeah. game she was and then followed coach's instructions in my opinion went all negative and didn't enjoy so much success of course she'll be on court later iris service fault called by ian spear yeah, not what she needs no. it's match points and she'll be on court later with uh, Rina, last match on in the uh, women's doubles. <laughs> it did look like it was going to go out, to be fair to Erika. But uh, right on the line, saves one of 14 match points. wide and that is the second match going Japan's way 21-15 21-7 Riko Hiroshi very much on top particularly in that second game match won by Japan 21-15 21-7 so that puts Japan two up in this uh, best of five and very much in control of the overall tie. Women's doubles uh, will be next on court. And uh, Steen Peterson will be in the box with uh, Jill for that. But this one taking just over half an hour. Rico Hiroshi beating Iris Wang 21-15, 21-7. And Japan with this victory very much in control of the overall tie.
So there we can see the match statistics for the second singles. Well, I would say that perhaps Iris Wang needed to mix up the serves a little bit more in that second game. She certainly didn't manage to do so. All of her serves were high. And it's an area that uh, perhaps players don't give enough thought to is the serving in singles very much a part of doubles.